All right, here we go. Let's be tough. To be a female hammer thrower in the United States is extremely hard. You have to really, really want this to endure it. Because if you didn't want it, and you didn't want to be broke, and you didn't want to be poor, and you didn't want to struggle, and you didn't want to face adversity, you wouldn't do it. My name is Gwendolyn Berry, and I am a hammer thrower for the United States of America. I attended McClure High School located in St. Louis, Missouri, um, around the Ferguson Florissant area in North County. I got started in track and field when I was a sophomore in high school. Um, during basketball season, I was trying to stay in shape and afterwards I didn't have anything to do. So the track coach asked me and two other girls if we wanted to try track and we tried it and somehow he convinced us to stick around. kid, I was always athletic. Um, I used to love playing with the guys. I played soccer, baseball, volleyball if I could, dodgeball. I mean, we never stayed in the house. We were always outside the house and I tried to stay very active. Bow. That was nice, Gwen. I still like to see last turn down a little bit more. I have a lot of coaches who inspire me. My main coach, Coach Smith, he inspires me because he is very, 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 very dedicated to the craft of coaching track and field throwers. So he loves what he does and it makes his athletes love what they do. This year has been a very good year for me, just because um, I went from being ranked outdoors, um, number 36 in the world, and I moved up to number 14. So that was a big step for myself. Um, I was actually invited to represent USA in the Pan American Mexican Festival, which is just a USA team that goes to Mexico and competes for the country. Um, I competed against my idol, this one I've idolized since I picked up a hammer. Yipsy Moreno, she's a Cuban. She is the most decorated female hammer thrower of all times, in my opinion. And I actually beat her out, so I won gold and she won the silver medal. That was very important to me because it boosted my confidence and made me feel like this is what I am supposed to be doing. The first sponsor I had coming out of college was New York Athletic Club. It is a club based in New York City in Manhattan. Um, they were really, really nice to me. They approached me after nationals, after I failed, which is pretty crazy, they approached me and said that they would support me and they wanted to see me in the sport. They loved my tenacity, they loved my personality, and they really believed in me and they believed that I could do great things in the sport. So they were the first sponsor. Nike as well sponsors me. Um, they help me with my clothing and apparel and travel and I do have some bonuses with them. Um, ben who is the throws representative, he is really nice, very encouraging and he always has my back which I really appreciate. My Olympic goals would to be obviously to medal. Um, this year has been one of the best years of my life, so I'm hoping that I can duplicate it and do even more come Olympic year. So I have two years to get prepared for that. But to get on a medal stand is one of my ultimate goals. One, two, three, stand. No, you got your ass kicked. Failures. Ooh, that's a hard one to talk about. The first time I was really good at failing was my senior year in college, um, indoor and outdoor nationals. I came in ranked number one in both uh, indoor and outdoor, and both times I didn't even make finals. Uh, it was extremely devastating. 
Um, I wasn't really hard on myself then because I had just started throwing and I was really new to the game, but turn around 2012, my first Olympic trials, I came in ranked number one. I had the farthest mark that year. I was, I wouldn't say I was supposed to make the team, but I was gunning to make the team. I was favored to make the team and um, that day, I got a little nervous, got a little overwhelmed and a little bit too hype and I ended up being team alternate. Um, it, it was really hard because, you know, that was my dream. That was my first Olympic trials and I really, really wanted to make the team. If I made the 2016 Olympic team, I would honestly be speechless. That is everyone's goal, everyone's dream. Only 10% of this world can actually say they've made an Olympic team, got the Olympic tattoos. So I really, really, really wanna make this team. If I do make it, it would be the biggest accomplishment of my life. When I hurt my back, I was completely shocked. It was so unexpected. It was so devastating. And I truly did not know what was to come of it. Basically what I did was, I was doing half rack squats. I put 550 pounds on the rack. When I went up to do the set, my back spazzed immediately. My muscles started to ache and cringe and tighten up and I felt sick. I told my coach what was going on and I told him how I was feeling. So he escorted me to the training room. In the training room, I laid down on a bench. I laid down on the table for what it seemed like forever because the trainer had you know, other athletes to attend to. So when he finally got to me, he asked me how I was feeling. He asked me what I did as well. Finally, he looked at my spine, he ran his finger down my spine to make sure I didn't do anything to damage that and he told me that my SIs were out of place so he stretched me for about 10 minutes and it loosened up but it was still pretty bad I could hardly drive home um, good thing about it was I didn't do anything too bad to where I could never throw again or to where I would be sitting out for more than a month and that was a good part of it It's a new video I just want to share with you. These are the, the final moments of 18-year-old Michael Brown. So we've taken you inside of this convenience store. We've heard from Ferguson police that they say he was, without a doubt, involved in what they call a strong arm robbery. Growing up in Ferguson, Florissant was, I mean, as a kid, you know, you never really know what's going on. But as an adult, you you know, you finally see how politics play a, a major role in society and how some things are not really always what they seem. This is where the Ferguson Forsen uh, catastrophe, I would say, happened with the whole Mike Brown situation. I used to go to this crib trip every day as a kid. I literally stayed right around the corner where I could hop a fence. Me and my cousins, we hopped the fence every day and we used to go to this crib trip all the time. So this is where, half, where it all happened. Um, basically the riders burned it down because this is where the first scene happened where they said that Mike Brown stole from this quick trip before he was shot. So a lot of people just come and put ribbons just to show respect. But the whole ultimate situation was really sad and it was a bad tragedy and I wouldn't wish death upon anybody's parents or anybody's family. Now that I'm back into training, life is a little bit easier. Um, basically what I had to do was I had to run a lot throughout the week. I was not throwing. 
Um, you know, of course, I had to stop a little bit and stretch my back because my back was very fatigued from all the spasms and not really doing anything for a couple of days. I also had to do light lifting, just like mobility lifting. But basically, running was most of it, running and a lot of stretching.